And we are the Y'all Show. Hello, I'm John Rawl. Welcome back. And we are delighted to have the barrister, the fellow that does everything that we all wish we could do when it comes to grilling. Matt Hermans is joining us right now. This is the program that's all about the South. We are Y'all and our website, y'all.com, where you can log on and see the podcast episode of the show, the Y'all TV, the video podcast of this show. And we even have awesome recipes up at y'all.com check it out it's the ultimate guide to the south y'all.com and the ultimate grill meister of the south is matt hermans and he's with us right now on the y'all show hello sir grill meister i like i like that that's pretty cool i mean we, little, we still uh, like little german yeah yeah we still like the barbecue barrister that's yeah. the title that you can't you can't run from that one <laughs> but we're, we're, I just rack up the title. Yeah, you you just rack it all up here. By the way, you may not be able to see me, but I I had you in mind. I've got my bright red y'all hat, and I even got my my bright red y'all vest. Although it doesn't have a y'all logo on it, but it does in spirit. So I had you in mind, Mister Red Raider. That's pretty awesome. I was uh I was wearing my black uh y'all hat the other day that I've received you really? so generously. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, we got a little something going. Hey. You deserve it. You deserve it, Matt Hermans. How, how you uh, how you managing through this whole isolation? Well, I mean, about the same as last week. Um, you know, work from home. Um, probably like most people out there, just um, you know, uh, trying to stay safe and um, you know, getting cabin fever already, wanting to get the heck out and do something, but. Uh, yeah, most places are closed and, you know, for good reason. So, you know, entertaining myself, uh, hanging out with the kiddo and spending time, time with the uh, the wife and stuff like that. So it's been, um, you know, good in a, in a very strange way. Been very, very strange, but also good in certain ways. But uh, trying to make ends meet, man, trying to make ends meet. Hopefully, um, hopefully it's not too much longer that we're, that we're locked. And I know some states are out there are more locked down than others. So, uh, you know, good uh, – Good luck to everybody out there who's on total lockdown. Mm -hmm. And I want to ask you, not only are you having to suffer through this like most of us here, but it must be really tough on you since you love your food, you love your your fresh meats and all the other fun things that you find at a grocery store. And so <laughs> yeah. have you at least been able to find a grocery store you can go in and patronize in the last couple of days? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I am, I am fortunate that, um, you know, the grocery stores in my little neck of the woods have still got stuff. Now they don't have certain things that no place has, right? There's no, uh, no bathroom essentials, put it that way. There's no, um, which like makes that. no sense by the way. Yeah. I mean, I'm imagining, you know, there's like 10 people out there with garage fulls of it, but I, you know, we're, we'll live through that, but, um, as far as food goes, no issues, uh, you know, not the best selection, but I, I, again, not complaining. There's been plenty of different meats and things for me to go look around for and cook. So, um, I got a fridge full and, um, so fortunate. I know some places have less than others and, um, you know, I guess if there were certain things I was particularly looking for, they've closed down the meat case. For oh, really? Instance. I think that, yeah, I think that's probably, my guess is that, you know, for people, um, they don't want, you know, people touching meat and, uh, you know, I guess potentially coughing onto meat or something like that. Uh, I guess that that's probably the precaution they've taken. So everything is kind of prepackaged, pre-shipped into the store, which changes a lot. But again, uh, I think in times like this, I, you know, I can find meat out there that I can cook. I'm not complaining at all. And, uh, you know, it's probably, again, probably for the best. Barbecue barrister Matt Hermans is with us. This is the Y'all Show. And as we talk about some of the issues we're having to put up with right now with this coronavirus, I want to ask you if you happen to know the way we, we talk about the supply chains of foods. When it comes to butchers, Matt Hermans, when you go into your local butcher and you get fresh meat, do you have any idea how long that that uh, deceased animal has been deceased? <laughs> uh, yeah, well, you could ask your butcher. If you go to a meat market, you know, you, you can, these people are, are um, 
really good at tracking where their meat comes from. You know, mm-hmm. they've got, uh, you, you know, not again, a little bit different at a grocery store, but uh, your local meat market, typically they will know when they get it, when the, when the animal was slaughtered and um, how long it's been there. And uh, I haven't heard a whole lot, at least again, every area is different, but at least in my area, I think the, uh, the meat markets are still, um, still open and still doing, doing their thing. Um, again, people are buying more and putting in the freezer and things like that. But, um, but yeah, so I, if you've got one around you, you might want to check it out. A lot of times they're running specials if they want to get rid of certain things or, uh, you know, but yeah, no, you're, if you go to a local, a small butcher or a local meat market, you should be able to say, Hey, listen, how long have you had it? You know, how, what's the age on it? When was, uh, you know, when was the slaughter date? When did you bring it to your case? You know, how long has it been, has it been frozen? Has it not? And, um, again, since you're working with somebody that's kind of personally involved with the, uh, the meat themselves, they'll they'll be able to, to kind of uh, tell you if you're interested. And, that's all good to be able to have the time to ask the butcher for that information. But what if you don't have that opportunity? Matt Herman's, is it often found on the packaging, the actual slaughter date? Oh, no, 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 no. It, no, definitely not. If you go, for instance, I go to Kroger and grab ribs. There's um, plenty of ribs. That's one of the things that's out there. And I love, I love ribs. I never get tired of ribs. It's my favorite. We, we might be able to pull through this thing now. Yeah, I know, I know, right? As long as I keep seeing ribs there, uh, it keeps my spirits high. But no, there's not going to be. They'll have like a Best Buy date or uh, something to that nature. But you're not going to be able to know. Um, you know that you'll you'll have to. I guess if you wanted to get deep into the weeds, you could probably look up the USDA, you know, requirements on how long something can be for sale, and then you can kind of like backdate that from the sell by date to get an idea of when when the animal was processed so but um, now you're not going to see that date okay well that's helpful to know now one good thing about the coronavirus if there's any good news is yes we we we're having problems with our food and some of us might get the virus unfortunately but at least electricity's working water's running perfectly fine which means things like freezers ought to be working fine. So you can go into your freezer if you have meat stored in there. And I want to ask you, Barrister, in your Matt Herman's world of freezing things, what is a shelf life or freezer life is the better term of meat? Yeah, so um, I generally, and we've probably talked before, I, I generally do not like to freeze meat. Um particularly like any kind of meat for any length of yeah time? no I, no i don't uh because it's what already a been frozen snob. Once. i know i know right but it's already been frozen once so anything you get well most of it put it this way anything you get from the grocery store has been frozen so once you once it thaws out it's been frozen once uh, you put it back in the freezer you're freezing it again and each time you freeze meat it kind of degrades the quality of it a little bit but we are not in uh, typical times right now. So, you know, what, what is, you know, p- the most pleasing to the taste buds maybe goes in the background a little bit. And what is going to be best for kind of a long-term uh, food supply kind of comes to the forefront. So you can freeze meat and, you know, whether you've got a deep freeze or just kind of a regular freezer attached to the fridge, meat will last a very long time. Um, it, it, I mean, you can eat meat that's been in your freezer a year. You can eat meat that's been in your freezer even longer. Now, the again, like I said before, uh, there are things that are uh, freezer burn. There are things that uh, the longer something's been in the freezer, you know, maybe the less um, appetizing it's going to be. But the shelf life is very, very long. Uh, it just depends on uh, what, uh, you know, what... Uh, taste or texture degradation you're willing to put yourself through and that of course you know if if we get hungry enough uh (laughs) things start sounding pretty good so uh the the answer to that is um a very long time Uh, most meat go over a year if it's cooked that's well okay so it's it's a little bit different let me make this um this uh qualifier meat that's been cooked and then frozen that's a little bit different um 
that that may not that'll last a while but it's a little different when you we have raw meat that's that's hard as a rock you know frozen at the bottom of your deep freeze that can last a very long time even processed game meat will last you know at least a year or so um you're good you're good on that i mean if we're not out of this deal in a year then we're having totally different conversations in fact we might be doing the show via smoke signal in the woods somewhere yeah i'm all for that if you want to join me there in the woods speaking of game as we go to our grocery stores mr hermans some of the prime meat choices we want may be gone it looks like your ribs are around and that's good news for you but let's say you want some some good ribeye or a hamburger meat that you want to take home with you and those items are currently out of stock in your local grocery store i found when i was in there the other day matt hermann something that i don't often see but maybe because nobody buys it that's why i saw it and it was one of the few meat items available and i want to get your take on this there's a company called manchester farms that produces quail and they freeze it and you can cook up quail have you ever had frozen quail or or quail period yeah i have had quail in fact I am a big fan of quail. Um, of course you are. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's it's an animal and you can smoke it. So, no, um, I am a... Uh, Somebody tried that with a bat and uh, that didn't turn yeah. out so well with this coronavirus. No, no, no. Let's... Um, I'm going to steer, steer way clear of bats. Uh, not not my favorite. Uh, have never done it. Would not recommend it. I'm going on the record with that. Um, but um, no, quail is a, is a tasty little bird. It's kind of a um, – have you ever heard of squab, John? I have not. Well, squab is a fancy name for a pigeon. Oh. Uh, so anytime – if anybody's ever gone to a fancy restaurant and they order a you know thirty five dollar plate of um, of squab, that's a pigeon. So um, <laughs> a like quail. the pigeon from your local park. Yeah, yeah, like the pigeon that that kind of doesn't want to get out of your way till you get six inches from him and then he kind of flaps off. Yeah, that same guy. That's a squab. But the reason I bring that up is because a quail. Uh, it's about it's about the size of a. Um, of a squab or a, or a pigeon, if you ever had that, uh, they're little birds or little game birds. In fact, that people across the, the South, if you're a, an avid uh, hunter of birds, you have probably either, you probably either hunted quail or you've, you've known somebody who's hunted quail, or maybe you've gone someplace uh, where you can hunt quail. Um, it is a game bird. It's not very big. If anybody, if you think of the old cartoons, it's kind of the bird. It's got the little, uh, little thing sticking up on its head it looks kind of like a uh, a little uh, question mark or something <laughs> that's what that's what you think of i think of the old uh, the old disney cartoons with them running around but I- anyway it is a it's a tasty little game bird it is not a uh, this is something that's interesting you think of poultry you think of white meat uh, quail is not white meat it is a dark meat oh is it similar yeah similar to squab or duck duck is also a bird you know it's, think again similar to chicken not a white meat uh, a darker meat and so is quail Uh, so if you like dark meat and you like a kind of a game bird type uh, flavor and taste and a lot of people do uh, dove people eat dove a lot clearly hunting dove is a big uh, is a big deal across south very similar to that Um, and quail can be cooked the same way it's a little it looks like a teeny tiny chicken and uh, you can fry them whole Uh, in fact i've had a a dish of uh, fried quail on uh, grits, and it is it's really <laughs> good. Yeah, it's fantastic. So, you know, you gotta you gotta <laughs> if you're used to eating fried chicken and, and you know eating chicken legs and drumsticks, it, it's a it's a much smaller version of that. Uh, so you might need to uh, you know kind of be dainty with it. But tasty little bird. A lot of times they're deboned and wrapped in bacon and smoked and that is a really good way to to eat quail as well so yeah you you know what it's going along with the thing we talked about last week sometimes you you're going to see stuff in the stores probably that like you said it's there because <laughs> maybe it's not the first or 10th choice that people have <laughs> Uh, but it's the 11th and you can uh, you can do something with it but um, don't overlook the quail tasty little bird uh, a lot of flavor, and um, yeah, it's it's a, a good little appetizer or a meal. 
And again, this company, Manchester Farms, has frozen quail in grocery stores all over the region and worth a try. I mean, you got me ready to go to the grocery store right now and pick up their last remaining box of quail, Matt Hermans. <laughs> There you go, man. Cook it up and um, just pretend it's a little chicken. You know, use your fingers and you eat the smallest drumstick you've ever had in your entire life. And but, I want to uh, also point out that I have a family friend who has worked for that company before. And I'm pretty sure, although it's been several years since we spoke, I'm pretty sure they grow their quails just like they do chicken. So these quail aren't being <laughs> brought in by the folks that went out hunting over the weekend, they're grown in a commercial environment. Yeah. Oh yeah. And, um, I'm sure you're right because there are quail farms, um, and across uh, our region and they're raised for that purpose. They're either raised to, to be processed, uh, for people to eat. Cause there are people that eat them, of course. Um, yeah. or sometimes they're raised to be released onto, uh, land to, to hunt. So yeah, it's, um, Little known business, but big. Uh, give, give the give the quail a try. Yes, and we encourage it, and it's actually supposed to be very healthy for you as as well. Mm -hmm. So quail, yes, we are all about the quail. <laughs> quail yeah, That's yeah, right. quail yeah. All right, <laughs> Matt Hermans, we're not done with you. You hang on, Mister Hermans, because when we come back, we're going to go to y'all dot com. There are some very tasty recipes that have popped up there, and I. I just got to get your take on it. We'll have more of our conversation with the barbecue barrister and the quail meister, Matt Hermans. That conversation continues after this break. Stay with us.